my... Uh, oh, my God. Well, uh, guys. It, it's uh, I didn't I didn't even see you there. Hello, welcome to uh, Wolf Den uh, podcast. That's where we are. That what year is it? It is uh the year of our Lord twenty twenty one. Ah uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, 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 thank you very very much for for welcoming me into the into the the, the the new year. I'm having a stroke already. I'm not prepared for this podcast. Uh, Will, how are you though? I, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I am currently just um, updating my wardrobe, buying some uh, wrestling t-shirts from ProWrestlingTees.com. Why would you sure that? they're all from Feder? Oh. I'm just trying to make sure they're all from federations that we're currently not engaged in a blood feud with. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, are you? Uh, do you like the WWE right now? Are you having a good time watching the WWE and and everything else I mean, that's I going on with that company? I haven't had a good time watching them in a very long time mm -hmm. uh but now i can honestly say i i don't think i'm gonna be watching them much longer sorry <laughs> sorry becky i'll have to I'll have to get your your comments elsewhere well it sounds like something happened will it sounds like something happened that you're not happy with what, what could have happened with the uh, wwe oh. that, that would get you so uptight like this you know it just just a little thing where they completely blocked one of our videos from being shown at all. Yep. Not even like a copyright strike, just just blocked from air in the United States and everywhere else. You notice on our on our uh, on our on our Wolf Den podcast YouTube channel, you'll notice that uh, it goes from episode 48, 47, 46, 44. There's a gap. Something's missing there. An entire two-hour-long podcast just deleted from the internet because of because of a thirty-second clip of a trailer of the new, not even released yet, WWE game that was a square in the middle of the screen that was like, what would you say, an eighth of the whole screen? It was like yes. very tiny. Yeah. No, nah, it and what kills me is it because you tweeted the actual like copyright claim image, and they claimed us for saying that we showed part of an episode of Two Hundred Five Live. And what is that? So even? not even it's like their online only show for you know cruiserweights. What does so that it's mean? Not, uh, wrestlers who weigh under two hundred five pounds. Two hundred two hundred five live. Get it? Is that tidy men? Yeah, the light, the I'm light. A, I'm a uh, tiny wrestlers. man then. Yeah. So they didn't even get us for the right thing. <laughs> they claim and they got us for something. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. And even though it's something completely different. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So basically, I don't understand why anybody likes this company. Like, uh, I know people like wrestling and that's totally fine. But everybody that I know that likes wrestling hates Every episode they watch of of Raw or any of the pay per views, they always have a complaint. There's never it's never a good time for them. It's it's two things. One, it's Stockholm syndrome. Yes, <laughs> a lot of people just you know they've been with this for so long they don't really know any better. Um, another thing too is just like for 20 years, that's all there's there have been is mm -hmm. the WWE in terms of like major wrestling. And it's been hard to, like, kind of escape that shadow. It's better now, especially because AEW is here and New Japan has a much larger presence in uh, major wrestling culture. And also, like, Impact and Ring of Honor have gotten a lot better. Um, but it's, just, it's hard to escape the pull of the WWE in terms of wrestling. Uh, not as hard as it used to be, I'll tell you that. But I, I feel like a lot of people. Uh, I, I feel like the WWE has such a big stranglehold because uh, it's all it's the biggest name. So kids don't know any better, and they don't really care about the storylines or whatnot. They just want to see the big buff right. men beat each other up. So uh, right. that's their demographic. Yeah, it's it's well, all. I think the go go ahead. The go problem ahead. is, you know, that's their demographic, but. Their demographic deserves a little bit better, I'd imagine. You know, uh, if you treat if yeah. you treat your audience like an idiot for so long, eventually they're going to turn on you. 
And those five-year-olds that are watching are going to eventually become 10-year-olds. and They're not going to want to watch it anymore. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people, like, I mean, so we saw, showed a trailer of, a, of, a, of their newest game. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I disputed it, and I said that it was, uh, I guess, transformative. But really, it's really yeah. just we're, we're doing a commentary. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I select one of the options was promotional, so I selected that because that's what it is. Uh, yeah. I don't know, but the problem is that that's not legally uh, suitable. Like it's still not like showing a trailer is not transformative, and it's not covered under fair use because it's somebody right. else's trailer. It's just mm -hmm. that most companies wouldn't bother you about it because you're promoting their thing. And you're talking about their thing. So uh, there's a lot of like, you know, like, like keyboard lawyers out there who are trying to tell me that it's like clearly a fair use case and that like we could fucking sue them. Like I would ever want to sue the WWE <laughs> yeah. over a no. stupid podcast episode. Um, People so have sued them I... over concussions and have lost. <laughs> yes. Concussions so... that they got wrestling for them. So of course I disputed it, uh, yeah. but it's it's not as it's not as you know easy as you think it is. Like they could they could very easily just say no, it's not transformative at all. It's our content. We're still blocking your entire podcast episode. Yeah, <laughs> and like I should be able to just blur that area of the screen. Like we don't yeah need to show that, but that's not and really an option. Like like you can do that, but. I can't like say one of the options is, hey, we're sorry. We're going to blur the screen now, you know? Yeah, it it's a problem. It's not it's a problem on the WWE side. It's also a problem on the YouTube side, because yes, once you upload a video, that's it. It's not like we could upload a different version of that video uh, with the offensive content blurred out or whatnot um and well, keep all of our metadata and you know view count and whatnot so, so, so youtube does have a tool that allows you to blur a part of the video it, it's just kind of right. shitty but uh yeah i've done it before we've, we've done it before with other i think uh right the one that comes to mind is we did uh the the uh the leaked footage of the harry potter game yes uh that got copyrighted uh, mm -hmm. because they didn't want anybody to see that Harry Potter footage, and we basically showed it on the podcast. So I blurred yeah. the whole screen when that was happening. And I could do that for this, but the way it is on YouTube's back end is, like, you have to dispute it for all other... Like, there's no option, like, sorry, we're going to blur it now. It's basically... Yeah. You have to say that it's fair use and then blur it. So you're, like, kind of lying. Yeah. Like, I know it's not fair use. I just know that it's promotional and nobody should bother me about it. Also, it's this yeah. fucking big and there's no audio. And also, it's not from that episode they said it was. It's a game trailer. Yeah. So, like, there's a lot There's a lot more levels to this than just hitting a tab on YouTube. It's very annoying. Yeah. And also, they have 30 days to say whether or not... Uh... First of all, so the podcast is not on YouTube right now. No, the, I, we should be clear. The podcast is available in all its audio formats on Anchor and iTunes and Spotify and whatnot. So that episode is still available, but only in audio format. Yeah, there's just a gap on YouTube where, where it would have been. Yeah. But So they have 30 days to b answer this this claim. And it's, and it's the WWE who gets to determine whether or not it's, it's it was a mistake. So... Yeah. Uh, so it it's all in their hands, and until then, the podcast is unavailable. the the yeah. The one episode of the podcast is unavailable on YouTube. It's a very ass backwards system. Uh, yeah. But uh, there's a lot of companies that do stuff like this. It's all automated stuff, so obviously it was a mistake. But I mean, it's up to them to determine whether or not it's a mistake. And we know that the WWE is very money hungry, and we you know yeah. uh, fuck them basically is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um. I'm wearing headphones like over the ear, big over the ear headphones because I had an ear infection and I don't want to shove anything oh, no. in my ears. So uh, that's that's why I'm doing this. You had an ear infection. I had a sore throat yesterday. It's the what is going on with us? It's either COVID or the season's changing. Yes. Uh, it wasn't like a hearty ear infection. It just leaked. Yeah. My ear leaked. Uh, it was gross. Um. But anyway. Uh. 
Where, 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 where am I right now? Oh, we're doing so, a podcast. We're doing a podcast. <laughs> yes. I'd like to give a special shout out to Kerr Fluffle, Razzle Jazzle for the subscriptions here. The real MKH for the subscription. Oh, yeah, boys. Hello. How you doing? The green. He said one, he said one year, boys. <laughs> Oh, whatever, dude. Green Mostaza uh, with the subscription. Thank you so much. I got a bug flying around, or maybe it was a booger that fell out of my nose. I don't know. Bagel Denizen <laughs> Brooks with the 44 months. Hey, yo, how you doing, Brooks? Boys, uh, we got some things to talk about today. We got, uh, yeah. What are we talking about today? We got to talk about, uh, oh, now all of a sudden N64 games are coming to Nintendo Switch Online. Yes. Um, we got Wada is at it again. Wada with, is with at a, it again with a, another childhood favorite game that's worth a lot of money all of a sudden for no reason. Yeah, and, and this one, this one's got some interesting, interesting uh, things about it. But we'll, we'll get it. Oh yes, that. oh yes, and it's of the Sega variety this time. Yes, uh, Quantic Dream Star Wars game. We got uh, mm -hmm. IKEA is in the news, <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff uh yeah. will yes bob tell me about these fcc filings nintendo has for a new controller that will lead okay. to the thing with the nintendo switch online that we want to talk about nintendo may have a new wireless controller in the works based on this fcc filing the company uh filed on thursday uh, the device has received a model number hac dash 043 which if it matters is one model number higher than nintendo's wireless snes controller from 2019. nintendo submitted a 180 day request for confidentiality to the fcc on july 26th that hides more revealing details of the device like photos and actual schematics but there are still a few details to share the device is a wireless and uses bluetooth and it appears to draw more power at 3.5 megawatts than the Joy-Cons 2.7 megawatts. FCC label placement, uh, which can sometimes reveal a bit more of how the device actually looks, also suggests whatever it it is would be a departure from the single label that the Joy-Con uses. Interesting. Here you just see some of the blank schematics. Um, now, some speculate the new controller could replicate another old console's controller like the wireless SNES controller did for the SNES. Maybe Nintendo could finally pull the trigger on a wireless N64 or GameCube controller for even more retro gaming. So that's basically where we're at. <laughs> so 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 okay, let me let me back up here. So this is a uh, they 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 have an FC Nintendo just to be clear, Nintendo does FCC filings for all different mm -hmm. types of stuff. Well, all companies do FCC filings for all different types of stuff. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a thing. It, they yeah. just they just always file a patent and whatever. Well, this is different. This is an FCC filing. This might be yeah. a different thing. But anyway, this could be nothing. However, the thing that makes it something is that the model number is one up from the SNES controller. Yeah, and, and hack refers to Nintendo Switch. Um, yeah. uh, so we're led to believe this is another switch online controller, uh, which I think is yeah. pretty reasonable to assume that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so now we're back on the Nintendo switch online speculation. What console could it be? And since it's a controller now, all of a sudden everyone's like, it's N64 now, even though two weeks ago we yeah. were on the game, game boy train. Now, all of a sudden we're on the N64 train. There, there's a bit more than that. It's also been noted that uh, Switch Online's third anniversary falls on September 18th, mm -hmm. um, which is also the 25th anniversary of the Nintendo 64. Oh, sorry, the Nintendo 64 is 25th anniversary, September 29th. Um, so okay. you can kind of see why Nintendo would want to like sync up those two. So next week, baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And of course, uh, Nate the Hate, who broke, quote unquote, <laughs> the news that there's going to be Game Boy games coming to Switch Online, is also now breaking, is also uh, adding his speculation that Nintendo 64 games are also on their way 
to Switch Online. Yes. Uh, and then there's an article about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm basically just summarizing that article. Right. Uh, or, so like, which is it, dude? Like, which one then? Is it both? <laughs> is it one or the other? Or is it that you saw that people were writing articles, so you're like, now we can speculate uh, something completely different, and they can write an article about that? <laughs> I, in In a normal world... Like, it could reasonably be both. Game mm -hmm. Boy games, Game Boy Color games, whatever, and Nintendo 64 games. When the Wii U launched uh, with Virtual Console, it, w it did a bunch of systems at once. It didn't do, like, one system, and then a year later, another system, and then a year later, another system. Mm -hmm. The problem is Nintendo doesn't really do normal, and they haven't been doing normal with the Switch right now. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Oh. Uh, I feel like they've been doing the bare minimum with the Switch, which is kind of the problem yeah. and kind of the reason why I don't think we're going to do an N64 at all. It would be great. Yeah. Also, we have been we said over and over again on this podcast that N64 is really hard to emulate. So, yeah. uh, I mean, they did a great job with Super Mario 64, but they need to do it one game at a time, basically. Uh, yeah. Make sure that it runs good. Um, yeah. So that's why I don't... If they even do N64 games, it's going to be very minimal. It would make a yeah. lot of sense for them to make a controller specifically for N64 games because uh, there needs to be... A, that's the biggest <laughs> problem with porting an N64 game is uh, the input is weird. Like, yeah, you have to have... There's a lot of buttons required for a game like Ocarina of Time. Something like GoldenEye, the C buttons are just the right stick, not a big deal. Yeah. Uh, even for Mario 64, though, you could map it to the right stick. But for games like yeah. Ocarina of Time you need all of those C buttons. So uh, yeah. mapping it to a stick just isn't enough. So having a controller specifically for that makes a lot of sense. However, again, I think it's it's going to be a lot of work in all of the other areas. Yeah. Game Boy, I think, makes the most sense. I mean, but then again, we have N64 uh, anniversary coming up, which yeah. is kind of a big deal. And I feel like it would be a bigger deal for N64 games to be put on a Switch, I feel like more people will be excited for that than they would be for Game Boy games. Oh, also, absolutely. with N64, because when they sold them on Virtual Console, those were like the premium titles. They were, they were like $10 each. Mm -hmm. And there have been rumors of a uh, Nintendo Switch Online like Pro account. For like a little more so, money, you get more features. It's the same and type of rumors. That, it's the same type yeah. of rumors that were just speculating the n64 in general like if we're gonna yeah. get n64 games it's just it's just it's just an easy conclusion to make that they would bump the price up because that's gonna be a premium those are premium games um, yeah and that makes that makes perfect sense to me too um however i think it's perfectly understandable for them to make a game boy controller also because they've just been making controllers with every online service they've been mm -hmm. releasing so it'd be stupid like it, there's no reason for a game <laughs> yeah, boy what controller. would a game boy controller look like just it a, has the same buttons as an nes yeah yeah it would just look like a game boy and then that's it and it would have the same d-pad as a game boy it's just that's it <laughs> the only thing that freaks me out a little bit is that it takes a lot more power it looks like like a significant amount more power it, yeah. It's going to draw 3.5 megawatts compared to the Joy-Cons 2.7. I don't know exactly what the SNES controller drew. But uh, well, drawing more than a Joy-Con sounds like a lot. Well, you got to remember, the Joy-Cons also attached to the side of the Switch. The mm -hmm. SNES controller didn't. So it's very possible that if this is an N64 controller... It's like a pro controller in that it doesn't plug into the switch itself. You have to charge it via USB C. Right. Right. So right. I don't think that's too much of a concern. Oh, I mean, it might correcting me. Milliwatts, not megawatts. Milliwatts. I'm so sorry, everybody. Sorry. Sorry. We don't know electricity. Yeah, I'm, not um, that, I'm not that guy, pal. <laughs> um,. What was I going to say? It, I mean, it might need to draw more power because it has, you know, an analog stick and more buttons. And maybe Nintendo is going to go crazy and have a Rumble Pack port on the back. What if... Oh, actually, Rumble Pack, would that would 
solve that. Well, no, because the Joy-Con yeah. has HD rumble. Right. Uh, I mean, the Joy-Con could just be more energy efficient. I I'm curious to know what the uh, power draw is on a Super Nintendo controller, on the yeah. Switch Online Super Nintendo controller. If anybody has like a, like a, with the FCC filing for that or something. Um, yeah. What if it's a Game Boy controller that is, that has a screen on it? That would require more be, power draw. Yeah, but like that much, I feel like a screen would need more power than that. You know, not if it's a friggin' DMG Game Boy screen, like a little True. shitty calculator LCD screen. But who's gonna like? Why would you put that in your game console in 2021? <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'm not saying it's a good idea. <laughs> I think yeah. the Rumble Pack makes a lot of sense because that would draw a lot yeah. of power, probably more than an HD Rumble situation. Yeah, uh, and that would be like the big. That would be like a big deal. Like, ooh, look at us. We 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 mimicked an N sixty four controller even down to the rumble pack. <laughs> um, and we got a lot of people in the chat still talking about Game Boy Advance. It's not going to happen. We're not getting Game Boy Advance games anytime soon. That's that's uh, one thing at a time. And uh, 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 Game Boy Advance very easy to emulate. It would be super easy to port that stuff. Yeah, Nintendo is going to put a premium on that. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know because they've. Because that was on Wii U Virtual Console, no problem. I don't think those were that expensive. So. I don't know. I th I, th I think Nintendo's doing the bare minimum right now. I think we're getting mm -hmm. Game Boy. Uh, I think... I mean, N64 would make a lot of sense. But uh, I think Game Boy Advance is a stretch. Yeah. Uh, Edward keeps saying that... Uh, FCC filing for a new Nintendo Switch controller will be made public this Friday. When is the okay. N64 anniversary? The 29th? 29th. Okay. And Switch Switch Online anniversary is the 18th. And as we all know, Bob, Nintendo always has a direct in September. <laughs> I Last week when I posted my video, I had notifications turned on for Nintendo just in case they announce something uh i'm gonna have to do that again this week i'm gonna have to have notifications turned on for nintendo's twitter and stare at it every day until i post my video because i can't post a video the day they make an announcement because my video will be yeah. useless so i don't know i so again nobody knows what this is if everybody's gonna try to tell you they know what this is, nobody knows what this is it yeah. could be anything uh it is likely something to do with n64 just because of the anniversary i mean we know it's nintendo switch online because it yeah. uh, all signs are pointing to nintendo switch online it's not confirmed it's nintendo switch online but all signs are pointing to that but this is something to do it's, yeah yeah with nintendo switch online uh signs are also pointing towards n64 just because of the anniversary although that seems like it it'd be hard for nintendo to do and also nintendo has been trying to half-ass things lately um yeah Signs are also pointing towards Game Boy because that's just an easy thing for Nintendo to fart out. Um, so again, there's no clear answer here. We don't know. But we're speculating that there's going to be new games on Nintendo Switch Online any minute now, basically. Any minute now, Nintendo's just going to come out and be like, hey, guess what? We got new games for you to come to Nintendo Switch Online, baby. And then Bob's going to have to wake up and make a quick video. <laughs> anyway uh that's that that's yeah. that's so so again i'm just mad because a few weeks ago we're talking about game boy games like everybody was so certain that there was going to be game boy games yeah and now all of a sudden we're we're taking a hard turn and those very same people are saying n64 games i think it's just like <laughs> you know by this point how old is the switch now like five years old four we're in the four. fifth year you you would think by this point all this would have been sorted out by now we would have had these games already mm -hmm. you know cuz we got them on the on Wii and the Wii U we got them on the 3DS even there there really isn't no real rhyme or reason for Nintendo to not do this they could easily do it, it it's... but they're that they're not and it's leaving a lot of people you know hungry and speculating you know left and right 
why aren't they doing this? When are they going to do this? Oh, they're doing this now. What do you mean you're not doing this now? No, you're an asshole. They're totally doing it. Things like that. I mean, it's people's whole jobs to speculate stuff. We're right. included in that. <laughs> no, I know. But it is fun to speculate. I completely understand. It is. Um, but, you know, it, it's you got to speculate. You got to remember to speculate within reason. Mm-hmm. Because I, I know, like, especially with Nintendo fans, like, if they don't announce the right game, then everybody gets mad at them. You know, every Nintendo Direct, it's like, oh, they didn't announce, you know, Star Tropics Revival or whatever. <laughs> Fuck this company, you know? I mean, I kind of fell into that speculative trap with, with Apple because everybody was yeah. saying we we're going to get freaking new MacBooks any minute now and then yeah. I waited for the announcement and then everyone was like well, of course we're not going to get new MacBooks. What made you think we're going to get new MacBooks? Yeah. Uh, uh, highly centric in the chat says on Spawncast this past Saturday Nate the Hate said only someone else and you Bob know what he looks like lol. Yeah he accosted me at PAX one oh, year. Yeah. He was dressed up in like Fair. a like a like a vest and like a dress shirt and a tie. I remember. I I also know what he looks like because I was there. That's ha! true. He said, gotcha. "I know what you look like," but you, no, he said, "I know who you are, but you don't know who I am." And I said, "Okay," because <laughs> like that could be anybody. That could be anything. Ah. And then he followed me around and creepily smiled at me until I figured out that it was it was him. It was uh, Nathaniel the Hatred. I mean, you see his icon, and I mean, he changed his icon now, but in past broadcasts, his icon was his face. Um, and that's exactly what he looked like. So I hate to, to, hate to break the illusion for you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, what are we, uh, yeah, we're talking about stupid N64 games. I would love N64 games. I would love that. Yeah, I would, yeah, so would I. I think it would be great. I would also like Game Boy games, games, but I would love N64 yeah. games more. Even if we just yeah. get like 10 N64 games, I'm still down mm -hmm. for that. Even if it's a premium, yeah, I would absolutely. still like that. Yeah, and it, it, does, it feels incomplete without them, honestly. It does need to come with a controller, though, because... Uh, yeah. And and for the love of God, I hope it's like a new... I hope they like try to make it a little modern. I know they're yeah. not going to, but it would be great if no. they tried to make it a little modern. I they gotta do something about the thumbstick because that's gonna yeah, break. That's the thing, I, honestly. Other than them making, because the thing about the SNES controller and the NES controllers they made, a you can only get them through Nintendo's website, and b you had to be a Nintendo Switch Online subscriber in order to get them. And c so they were. I don't know where the fuck mine are. <laughs> yeah. So they were very like restricted in terms of like getting access to them. Mm -hmm. And something like the N64, I feel like you need to open that up a little bit because people are going to want to play with the proper controller. But beyond that, I hope to God they put uh, controller customization in Nintendo 64 and Nintendo Switch Online. Because if any system needs that, it's that one. They they have a decent like controller layout for other systems for SNES and NES like like yeah they let you screw around a little bit at at first i think they didn't let you do anything but uh now they kind of let you flip the controls just a little bit so yeah hope well uh, i know i think I, there will I played, be functionality like that when i played super metroid i i actually like swapped around the controls but i did it in super metroid i didn't do it on a oh, system oh interesting I didn't know you could yeah, do Super that. Metroid's That's kind of crazy. Got, Super Metroid has weird controls. I think shoot is A, but I'm used to shoot being where Y is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I have to look at a controller every time I think about this because it's <laughs> flip-flopped on uh, Xbox and, yeah. and Switch. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm happy. I, I, I mean, I'm positive we're getting some sort of Nintendo Switch Online something any minute now. Hopefully yeah. it's uh, early in the week so that it doesn't coincide with a new video of mine. But <laughs> Nintendo doesn't like to play nice with me. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it'll I think it'll be a good time for everybody. Uh, uh, for anybody curious, there were 21 games released on the Wii Nintendo 64 Virtual Console. And 21 games released on the Wii U and 64 Virtual Console. And we're not going to get nearly that many. I'm telling you no. right now. Also, I also think 10 is all, a stretch. 
Yeah. Not all the same games either. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So the Wii had Bomberman Hero, but the Wii U had Bomberman 64. That might be uh, the same game. I, no, it's not. Those are actually. I think Bomberman Hero was an RPG. The Wii also uh, had Cruising USA, FX, F-Zero X. Oh, the Wii U had that. Uh, the Wii U had Donkey Kong 64 and Excite Bike 64. The Wii U didn't. The original Wii did not have that. Interesting. Is Bomberman Hero the Japan only one? No, one of them was Japan only. It was like there were three Bomberman games on the N64 in America, mm -hmm. and then there was like four. I think in America it was Bomberman 64, Bomberman Hero, and Bomberman Second Attack. And I think in Japan it was Bomberman 64, Bomberman 64 2, and then like two others. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got Bomberman Hero, Bomberman 64. Oh, no, no. Wait, wait. This is very confusing. This is very yeah. confusing. So in North America, we got Bomberman Hero. Then we got Bomberman 64, The Second Attack. And then we got Bomberman 64. <laughs> no, it didn't go out of that, order, did it's it? It's 1998, 2000, and 2001. Jeez. Oh, That's so annoying. So yeah, I don't know what the games were in in Japanese though. I think I think Bomberman sixty four came out first in Japan, and then yeah. and then they and then we got it later. Maybe I don't know. Oh no, no, no that's what it is. There are two different Bomberman games called Bom Bomberman sixty four. Okay, that's what it is. The, 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 so Bomberman 64 says the game was released on December 20th 2001 it was the final game released for the N64 in Japan oh it yes. is often confused it, with the 1997 game Bomberman 64 which was known as Baku Bomberman okay I am I am still so confused so <laughs> The game we know as Bomberman 64 was originally released in Japan as Baku Bomberman. And then in Japan, they got an exclusive game also called Bomberman 64. Wait. I think the game we know as Bomberman 64 was the last game. The one no. that... No. The game we know as Bomberman 64 was the first game called Baku Bomberman. Oh, you're right. This was released in 1997. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there are four games. There are four games. Two of yeah. them are called Bomberman 64. Okay. So wait, yeah. Bomberman 64 2001 never came out in America. Correct. Okay. So the very last game to come out for the N64 never came out in America. Yes. So there's two Bomberman 64s. Only one of them came out in America, and both of them came out in Japan. Fuck. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, well, we got there in the end, boys. I'm, I'm so yeah. happy we, we did this. <sighs> Why are we talking about that? Oh, because of the virtual console. Yes. Um, I don't know what games we would even realistically get for the N64. So there weren't many N64 games, period. No, uh, it only had like 300 something total worldwide. And I think only like 290 something came to North America. Mm -hmm. I have always said, you know, when back back in the day, we used to speculate about if we're getting an N64 mini classic console. Mm -hmm. And I have always maintained that that's going to be a hard sell because not only would you have to like, because not only is emulation hard, on the N64, um, but also most of the games people remember from the N64 were made by Rare. Yeah. And Rare is now owned by Microsoft. I know things are different now, but I doubt that we're going to see Banjo-Kazooie and Gold, especially not GoldenEye, and Perfect Dark and Jet Force Gemini on this service. I mean, what if they do a special Rare replay? 
That would be interesting. Like 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 what they should really do is announce uh N64 with ga- with uh with Nintendo Switch online. Have your have your Mario Kart 64, your Zelda, your Super Mario 64, whatever. And then and then you release the controller and then yeah. you say by the way, rare replay all N64 games. You can play it with this controller. That'd be yeah. pretty sick. And it'd be totally fine. It'd be totally worth paying the extra couple of bucks for the rare games. Yeah. Uh anyway, Games we would see probably on the Nintendo Switch Online service. Mm-hmm. Mario sixty four. They stopped selling the uh, the the triple pack of the Mario yes. games. You could still find physical copies at retail price. I've seen it in Target. Uh, so, so they so stopped you... selling it presumably because of something like this. So they, they, they stopped selling sense. it because they're out of their mind. <laughs> yes. So we'll probably get Super Mario sixty four if this even happens. Yeah. Ocarina of Time, probably not playing that again. <laughs> I will continue my playthrough on, on emulation. Mm-hmm. Uh Mario Kart 64 for sure. Uh Perfect Dark is a rare game. I wouldn't be surprised if we got Perfect Dark if they don't do a rare replay type deal. Yeah. Uh but otherwise, yeah, it's rare, so I don't know. Banjo kazooie, I feel like that's like really tied up in like a legal issues no banjo kazooie is that's owned by microsoft completely oh so i thought it was an activision thing no not banjo kazooie oh you're thinking of like crash bandicoot anyway we got majoro's mask (laughs) yeah i don't know about that i mean maybe Maybe, but also maybe down the road because they want to save some uh hype for that Mm mm-hmm Star Fox, absolutely. That'll be an easy one. Yeah. Uh, none of the Pokemon games. You're not getting any Pokemon games. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. Mario Tennis, maybe. Mario Party, definitely. Well, no, because Pokemon Snap came to the Virtual Console, and so did Pokemon Puzzle League. Puzzle League, so maybe. It's very- yeah. That's an easy one. I think Pokemon Puzzle League was called something else in Japan that didn't involve Pokemon. So maybe we'll get that version. Uh, people in chat are saying Smash. Uh, Smash? Yeah. Yes. But also, it's really hard to emulate that game, specifically. That game is, like, uh, yeah. like really uh, power-hungry. Um, but but probably, I mean, it would make a lot of sense. I wish we can get 1080 snowboarding. Uh, well, that, was on, that was on Virtual Console. I'm going through both mm-hmm. Virtual Consoles to see what games are on it. But, you know, Virtual Console had a lot of licensed stuff, and I just don't think that's going to happen on Nintendo Switch Online because it's like a service. Right. Well, 1080 snowboarding wasn't licensed. That was a Nintendo-owned game. Oh, well, then we'll, oh, maybe we'll get it. Yeah. I like I like 1080. I thought that was a claim. No. That was Dave Mira. <laughs> Designer is Shigeru Miyamoto. Oh, Super Smash Brothers was on the Wii Virtual Console, but mm-hmm. not the Wii U Virtual Console. Interesting. Oh. I think that's really it. We got Mario Golf, like all the Mario sports games, probably. The yeah. Mario Parties. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I think that's really it. We're not going to get too much stuff. If we get 1080, I'd be stoked for that. That's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, anyway. Kirby, yeah. What Kirby's though are there even? Um, I was on Kirby. the Wii, on the Wii and Wii U Virtual Consoles. It was Kirby sixty four, the Crystal Shards. Yes, we do have that here. I, I know yeah. nothing about this game. It looks like this: a big, <laughs> big green blob. Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean. I'm skeptical Nintendo would go so far as to put in 64 games on the freaking yeah. Switch. Uh, but it's possible. Mm-hmm. I still think that Game Boy would be way easier. I mean, maybe we'll yeah. get... I'd be shocked if we get both. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's one of those things where we'll get both and we'll only get 10 Game Boy games and like 10 N64 games. That would yeah. make people happy. Uh, but... Or, or maybe we'll get Game Boy games as part of the regular service and N64 as part of the premium you pay more money service. Yeah. 
Um, but anyway, who knows? I, there'll be an announcement sometime in the next week, and I'll be mad probably about it. <laughs> um, what was it? N64 boss in the chat says pod racing would be sick. Did they release pod racing on the Switch as like a standalone game? Do you remember? Mm, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you could just do that. <laughs> yeah, that game holds up. Yeah. Yeah, it's right here. Star Wars Racer. Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. That is it cool. is. It's on sale. Seven forty nine. It's half off. Ooh, there you go. I haven't played it on the Switch. Uh, oh my god, it's beautiful. On the N sixty four itself, it holds up. And uh, yeah. yeah, I mean it, it. It's one of the highest resolution games on the N sixty four, and I think it runs at a full sixty frames. Not all the oh, time. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I think it's like 480 interlaced or something ridiculous. Like it's 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 beautiful. Wow. And and yeah. if you use one of the uh, N64 HDMI upscaler situations, it's freaking gorgeous this game. Mm -hmm. It's got like lens flares and shit. It's awesome. Uh Let me figure out the resolution of that. Anyway, uh Anyway, that's what we think about N64 and uh, and was yeah. uh, Game Boy or Nintendo Switch Online, whatever we're getting. Uh, we got 100 bits from Troy McClure. You might remember him from such films as... <laughs> uh, Today We Kill, Tomorrow We Die, and Dial M for the Metric... No, Dial M for Murderousness. <laughs> it's Here Comes the Metric System from one of his educational films. Uh, oh, I'm reading patches for episode one racer. No, get out of here. Anyway, uh, while I keep looking this up, what's next for news? Will oh, Wada is back at it again. <laughs> uh, so all right, this time Wada. This, the company that is certifying video games, um, you, they grade them, give them a grade out of 10, so you can auction them off for really high prices. Uh, they are back on their bullshit, and this time they are targeting the Genesis crowd. A copy of the original Sonic the Hedgehog game for Sega Genesis has been sold for a record-breaking sale price of $430,500 US. This isn't just a new record for this Sonic game either. It also makes it an all-time record for any Genesis title. This graded game has been WADA certified. As you might recall, WADA is what WADA is one of the grading companies that has been previously under fire for allegedly manipulating the retro video game market. Just recently, for example, the co-founder was accused of selling the company's games under a different alias on eBay. Sonic the Hedgehog co-creator Yuji Naka even saw the latest sale himself, taking talking about the possibility of it being a scam. And here you see Yuji Naka's tweet. I got an email about this He's, tweet. Twitter was really? like, Yuji Naka just said. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? <laughs> is it a scam? That's a scam, right? I wonder if it is I wonder if it was time for Sonic to reach a high. Uh, of course, many response, responses on social media were quick to link to Carl Jopp's YouTube video and follow-up stories about the graded games market in recent times. Uh, it's not just Sonic we're seeing this with. Back in August, a copy of the original Super Mario Brothers on NES sold for a record-breaking $2 million. Uh, Wada previously shared the following statement with Nintendo Life in response to the Carl Jopp's accusations about fraud and deception. Wada Games is a trusted leader in the collectible video game grading in collectible video game grading and we're honored to play a key role in this booming industry that we are incredibly passionate about we are humbled by the support our thousands of customers who trust us to provide accurate and transparent uh, grading the claims in this video are completely baseless and defamatory and it is unfortunate that mr jobs did not contact us to give us the opportunity to correct him i'd like to go back for a second and say that Star Wars Episode One Racer with the expansion pack runs at 480i, which is like 
mm-hmm. really high for N64. Not a lot of games do that. And uh, I don't know about the frame rate. Okay. I don't think it's one of the ones that does 60. But well, if, it, if it's interlaced, it might do 60. That's what I'm trying to figure well, it's, out. It's 60, it's 60 interlaced, so that like would equate to 30. Yeah, 30, just flickering back and forth. Yeah. F-Zero did 60. I don't know about episode one racer. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have any hard data on that, but I'm pretty sure it was high. Yeah. Uh, it does 60 in the remake, though, as far as I know. Anyway, okay. uh, so yes, this is what the stupid uh, freaking uh, WADA... Th- it's a 9.4, and it's got a freaking tear in the... In the yeah, in the, uh, that's what I was going to say, yeah. In the packaging, in, in, the, in the seal. Yeah. That's... So how, how could it be over a 9? That's ridiculous. Yeah, that... <sighs> If this was comics, if that was the C- if this was the CGC, this thing would it would be lucky if it got a five mm-hmm. for a tear like that. So 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 we talked about this a while ago uh, because there was there's been a lot happening in in the uh, retro game market, the resale market. Mm-hmm. Um, the last time we talked about this was in original Super Mario Brothers sealed in box. Uh, Nothing crazy about it. It's just the original Super Mario Brothers that was in good condition, sealed in box, sold for an astronomical amount. Two million, I think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and that game is one of the one of the highest selling games of all time. There's yeah, like plenty the of those games. Most common game, yeah. And, and then it, Carl Jobs made a... a a uh, great YouTube video that's 50 minutes long, but it's awesome, and I highly recommend you watch it. Uh, and it's yeah. about how Heritage Auctions and WADA are, uh, they have a big, basically, uh, they have a racket going on. They have a they have a scam yeah. that absolutely needs to be investigated by the FTC because yeah. um, it's like, it should be super illegal. The same people who were involved in this scam uh were uh investigated for doing the same thing for uh collector coins they were they were uh inflating the collector coin market some of the same people were also doing the same thing in the comic book market um and now they're now they see video games as the next market they could pump the numbers in and 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 sell them for ridiculous amounts of money and it makes perfect I don't know why these people are fucking stupid they're doing it completely out in the open so everybody can see it yeah they're they're just it's it's like these guys have never seen video games before they went from they went from the original mario brothers one of the most popular games of all time the most popular video game character of all time they went from that they went to mario 64 then they went to the legend of zelda which is another incredibly popular ip Mm -hmm. then they went back to mario and now they're like, what other popular video game characters yeah. are there? <laughs> Next on the totem pole is freaking Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog, yeah. So they're 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 literally like, there's no reason why this should be worth a lot of money. There's so many copies of this freaking game. Yeah. So so I mean, th- 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 what's next? They're gonna do they're gonna do uh, what else is there? Pac Man, Mega Man. I'm um, Mega Man. Uh, Probably Metroid at a Crash certain Bandicoot. point. Crash Bandicoot. Like Mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. Uh, Street Fighter. Street Fighter 2 specifically. Um, yeah, it, it's nuts. Now, here's something that I don't want to say on the show, but <laughs> I, I feel like I should. There are three different releases of the original Sonic the Hedgehog game. Mm-hmm. There's this one that you see right here. Uh, there's a second version that many of the, you kids know watching at home that says in big red letters not for resale that's the version that came with the sega genesis so chances are if you own a copy of sonic the hedgehog you bought it with your genesis and it said not for resale on it that's the most common version they did sell it of course without a sega genesis and that's the one that doesn't say not for resale but there is a third version of the original Sonic the Hedgehog for Genesis that has an ESRB rating on it. 
that came out late in the Genesis life because they didn't start putting ESRB ratings on games to like late in the Genesis life cycle. And that is actually the rarest version of the original Sonic the Hedgehog. They didn't make a lot of those. Yo, this guy's selling it for two hundred for almost three hundred dollars. That's a steal, baby. Yes, one of those I could see being graded and you know selling for a high price. Not a version of Sonic the Hedgehog from its original release that has a fucking tear in it, <laughs> and not it, even like a little tear. It's a that's a big tear. We we literally saw this exact same thing with the with the Mario that Carl Jobs made a whole video about because yeah. that's not even the rarest version of the original Super Mario Brothers. The rarest version is the test market version, the first one that was released in America that has a sticker on it, and that one yeah. didn't have a sticker. It was a 9.8 for no reason. And there's the tear. And apparently the top is folded too or something. It looks like there's like, yeah. a, it's like somebody punched the top of it. This is ridiculous. Oh, yeah. it, it, so yeah. to summarize Carl Jobs' video, uh, there and also when we talked, we talked about it on this podcast before we even watched the video. Um, yeah. There, it, while we were doing that, we were like, there, Watt has been around since 2018. I thought they'd been around for way longer than that. The reason we thought that was because there was a completely different company that did gratings. Yeah. Uh, I forgot what their name was, um, but Heritage Auctions, which is a big auction house for uh, uh, comic books, collector coins, just collector stuff, they've been getting into yeah. comics, and they decided to make their own rating system called WADA, and now WADA is over here uh, fudging the numbers to to make things look more expensive yeah. than they are. I just want to note real quick that this sale of Sonic the Hedgehog um, was actually was not done through Heritage. It was done by Golden Auctions. What do they have to do? What do they have to do with WADA and Heritage? <laughs> I don't know. Um, this is either a a whole uh, a whole new scam that they're brewing up, or B this is a whole completely separate company that has now gotten sucked into, you know the scam by accident basically i'm uh very sus they don't have yeah they do not have a uh a wikipedia oh that is sus indeed ken they're verified golden. on twitter though ken uh, golden the, is the guy yeah the other company that does grading is vga They've been around for longer than WADA. Founder of Golden Auctions. Lifelong collector. He does sports collectibles and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, it's not it's not out of their own possibility for this guy to be in the pocket of the same people that heritage auctions are dealing with because he's a collector. Yeah. This is what he does. He makes money buying and selling collectible items. So it's not too out of the realm of possibility for him to know the people at heritage and be like, Hey, let's get some heat off of you guys. Let's freaking uh, let's sell a freaking Sonic for an astronomical yeah. price and get some idiot to buy it. The, the thing is that they sell it, and then they have somebody that they know buy it, and then they, and then all of a sudden it's worth a lot, and they can sell it another one for a little bit lower and mm -hmm. make some money. It's it's freaking it's 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 insanity, and the reason the, the fact that the FTC doesn't do anything about it is ridiculous. Um, yeah, I think that they absolutely will very soon. Yeah, um, if if it keeps going like this, they're gonna have to. I saw not too long ago. I saw a a copy of Amazing Fantasy fifteen. The first appearance of Spider-Man sold for like three million dollars, and I think that officially made it the highest selling, the highest priced comic book ever. A a version of Amazing Fantasy fifteen, same grade, that was sold last year for like three hundred something thousand. Mm -hmm. So within a year, same same comic, same grade, got like. A a one hundred percent, a one hundred times in price increase, and you look at who was who was sold through, Heritage Auction. Yeah. So they're 
they're doing all this stuff with gaming. They're already you know under the microscope uh, for what they're doing with gaming, and now they're trying to pull the same shit with comics as well. I mean, well, no, they've been doing it with comics. Is the thing they, right. we're just we're just that, now kind of shining a light on it. Well, it's either that or because like from three hundred thousand to three million in a year, mm. that doesn't happen. It doesn't make any sense. It just does does not happen. And it's not even like there's a new Spider-Man movie. Like there's a new Spider-Man movie coming out this year, but there wasn't one, you know, at the time to warrant a $3 million price sale. So I feel like, you know, they're having all the success with the video game thing side of things. Why don't they try, you know, pulling this shit more out in the open with comics? So uh, anecdotally, uh, we have a friend who uh, got screwed by Heritage. He bought a, uh, he was buying a first appearance of uh, Mysterio before, you know, the Mysterio movie came out, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, <laughs> he won the auction. And Heritage just took his money and didn't give him a thing. They said there was a conflict, um, like two people won the auction, which is is yeah. an impossibility. That's not how auctions work. Uh, but yeah. what, and and they they. Uh, I think they didn't refund him the fee, like the auction fee. Like they basically yeah. kept it their 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 uh, commission price, uh, which is absolutely ridiculous and probably illegal. Um, yeah. But uh, what happened? What probably happened was Heritage put it up for auction, knowing that the movie was coming out, and they bought it themselves. Yeah. And since our friend won the auction. They didn't want to give it to him because they were trying to buy it themselves to inflate the price. You know what I mean? It's like it's like when yeah, you yeah. have no, I know. I'm, I'm I'm talking to the chat. It's like if you have uh, if it's like if you lift so it's like if you list something on eBay and you're not getting enough money for it, so you make another account and you bid on it yourself to make the numbers maybe, go up. Maybe that's what I should do because I got like four comics that haven't been selling. I should do. That. Will what yeah. what's your what's your eBay store, Will? Uh, f- let me actually look because I don't know. <laughs> oh God, I I've <laughs> bought I've bought a uh uh comic book pages on um heritage auctions. I bought uh original comic book uh, art on heritage auctions before, yeah. and they, I mean I didn't I they weren't like expensive things, but uh I probably got ripped off. And you know it's like. We said this the first time we talked about Heritage. When they do this, when they jack up the prices like this, it doesn't just affect, like, the high-end collector's market. It affects, you know, all the other markets, you know, down the line. You go to a convention now, and people are going to start selling, you know, copies of Sonic the Hedgehog. It used to be, like, 15 bucks. Now they're going to sell, they're going to keep them behind glass cases and, you know, sell Mm -hmm. them for a lot more. Things that sh- that shouldn't be expensive are now going to become expensive because of these people. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm gonna go to too many games in like two or three weeks, and uh, I'll let you know what the freaking yeah. <laughs> ridiculous price of things are gonna be. I like to. Uh, I always look for retro games when we go to these conventions. Comic Con has some stuff. Uh, even yeah. PAX has some stuff. Um. And it's always ridiculously priced. It's like convention pricing. But Too Many Games is very competitive because there's so many... Uh, 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 there's, there's so many retailers there. There's so many people selling games that like yeah. uh, you could find very good prices. Uh, I'm curious to see what the pricing of this retro stuff is going to be. Uh, I'm, ch- I'm on Heritage Auctions right now trying to see... Yeah. Uh, what I've purchased from them before I forgot. I think I got that uh that Godzilla uh thousand year war art from them. Oh yeah. That's a good one. Did you find your eBay store yet? I did. I put a link to it in the chat. It is ebay.com slash user slash Spartacus Red. I am currently selling Fight Club two uh before Watchmen Night Owl and Rorschach. That's a bundle. <laughs> and the Manhattan Projects issues six through fifteen. So, uh, user is spelt weird. It's U S R. Yeah. So I will be having more on the page shortly. Uh, gotta give me time. Uh, but yeah, if any of those interest you, there you go. Those are good prices, by the way. I'm not ripping you off. If anything, I'm taking a loss. 
Oh my god, you saw a Manhattan Project. I love this. Yeah. Good... I touched these comics. <laughs> <laughs> I read these a long time ago, but I did read these. Yeah. Uh, Watchmen, I've touched some of these. Yeah. Which ones? I, I think, think you... I, only, I only read Rorschach. What are these? Oh, Rorschach. All right. Yeah. Well, no, you got... So you got Rorschach and Night Owl. You got, like, the first two. Okay. And, like, I just... I was I was sitting there reading them, and I'm like, fuck, I gotta see how this ends. So I had to go hunt down the other mm. issues. Rorschach is surprisingly not bad. Um, Night Owl, I'm basically throwing it in there for free. <laughs> uh, and Fight Club 2 is very good, I heard. Fight Club 2 is very good. It's weird. I suggest you read it all in one sitting, but it is very good. Okay. I have no Silent freaking Mongoose. idea how to... Go ahead. Add go ahead. touched by Bob Wolf in the description. <laughs> I have no idea how to see my past orders on heritage auctions. Yeah. It's my orders, but nothing's coming up. Past invoices. I mean, I could also just go to my email. I want to see what this, like, art is selling for now. Anyway. Uh, uh who, what was the guy who did it? Uh... Who did what? Thousand Year War. Uh, Sarman oh, uh, James, James Stoko. Stoko. Yeah. James Stoko. Yeah. Sorry, no matches. Ah. Anyway, uh, that's that. Heritage auctions. That's that. Well, no, we're not even talking about heritage auctions. We're talking about the stupid Sonic. Be yeah. Don't if you have a lot of money. If you're a rich guy listening to this, don't buy any freaking uh, WADA graded stuff at all ever. Yeah. Because they're gonna get. Yeah. They're gonna get slammed, and you're gonna lose a lot of money. Yeah. And Instead, listen, if you're a rich uh, guy, to the Wolfman podcast. <laughs> yes, we could use a couple hundred grand. Yeah. Uh, if if you're uh if you're a rich guy, and you're buying collector stuff, you probably know what you're doing with your money. But yeah. You could be a dumb rich guy. Don't don't be that. Yeah, that's the thing. These rich people they know each other and they they launder money. They know yeah. how to launder money. Somebody in the chat said that it's just like the art use the the the, the collectible art market. And yes, it is exactly oh, yeah. the same. And they all buy yeah, and sell from each other, and it's just a way yeah. for them to launder money. Basically, yeah. Uh. Anyway, what's next, Will? What do we got? Uh, next, uh, a new Star Wars game from Quantic Dream is reportedly in the works. The Heavy Rain and Detroit Become Human Studio is trying something new. The studio behind Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, and Detroit Become Human, Quantic Dream, is moving from androids to droids. It's developing a new Star Wars game, according to reports from Dual Shockers and Kotaku. According to both reports, Quantic Dream is already 18 months into development of its unannounced Star Wars project. Quantic Dream's rumored Star Wars game is reportedly is reported to be different from the developer's previous games. Kotaku, citing an unnamed source familiar with the project, reports that the game will focus less on quick-time event-style mechanics and more on traditional action elements. Uh, we've reached out to Quantic Dream for comment. Since releasing the PS4 exclusive Detroit Become Human in 2018, Paris-based Quantic Dream has been has been presumed independent, expanding into publishing and founding a new studio in Montreal. Quantic Dream Montreal is headed by Stephanie De Astos, formerly of Eidos Montreal and Ubisoft Montreal, Assassin's Creed, Assassin Assassin's Creed game designer Johan Casas briefly served as gameplay director at the new Quantic Dream before moving on to EA's Moto Studios. And then it's just a whole lot about Quantic Dream and their history. In January, Lucasfilm proclaimed a new era for Star Wars games with Lucasfilm and the galaxy far, far away entering a new and unprecedented phase of creativity. So will the world of Lucasfilm games, development in collaboration with finest studios across the industry. Uh, since then, Lucasfilm games has and its partners have announced a new title coming from Ubisoft's Massive Entertainment, a remake of Knights of the Old Republic, and a free-to-play combat arena game called Star Wars Hunters. It would... So, it would make a lot of sense for them to make a Star Wars game. I mean, uh... So, Bioware did, uh, freaking... Whatchamacallit? 
Kotor. Kotor, Knights of the Republic, mm -hmm. and th that was a big part of that game was uh, uh, making decisions. It was like making uh, decisions. Yeah, the, it was like, like uh, having conversations. Yeah, it, it, like that. It, that uh, games like that paved the way for Quantic Dream to even exist. So, yes. uh, well, the thing about mm -hmm. when they say in the article, Quantic Dream games aren't exactly like traditional action-heavy games. Mm -hmm. uh, they're more reliant on like quick time events and cutscenes. And things like that. It, it's it's less of an active experience and more of a passive experience. Um, but it sounds like with with this, I guess because it's Star Wars, they're trying to um, something new. They're trying to expand their horizon. So that'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I'm curious to see how they handle action. I'm not. Uh, well, w there was action in uh, what's their last? What was their last game? Detroit, Detroit become human. What what was yeah. before Detroit become human? Beyond Two Souls. Oh, I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, I so the only one of these games I played was Heavy Rain, and mm -hmm. that, you know, I I would not consider that an action game at all. Like the action scenes in it, it's like like you can control your character, like move him around a room and stuff, but they'll often take movement away from you so a cutscene can play out, and then the the quick time events show up. So if, like you get into a fight with somebody, they'll flash like X on the screen for you to like try to punch them or not. Um, mm -hmm. But there will like there will always be something interesting to do. And if you fail a quick time event, it's not the end of the game. The game keeps going. Like it's possible for all your characters to die, and the game keeps going anyway. Mm -hmm. So that was always like the interesting thing on Quantic Dreams games. I should note that uh, since Heavy Rain. Their, their games have got like varied in quality <laughs> from all accounts. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know anybody who likes Beyond Two Souls. Um, and for what I've seen, Detroit Become Human is close to Heavy Rain, but has a really shitty story. Um. So yeah, I'm interested to see how they how they go into uh, combat. Yeah, but it sounds like it's still going to be. I mean, this company's going to focus on story and. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'd be surprised if it's not like the old KOTOR games, which are heavily focused on uh, decision making and 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 yeah. dialogue and stuff, even interweaved with you know the weird uh, uh, real time turn based combat. <laughs> Forgot yeah, but, but at the that. same time that I don't know what the fuck you call KOTOR's combat. But speaking of which, we're getting KOTOR. We're getting a remake of KOTOR. Right. So. I would imagine Lucasfilm would want Quantic Dream to do something different than that. See, and to be fair, their games are different from that. But you know, I think that just by adding, because those games are still like linear games. Big RPGs are open ended, and like you can do a lot of stuff. Whereas Quantic Dreams games, you're still following one single narrative. You're not like going off and doing a whole bunch of stuff. So. I'd argue that if they're coming out with a remake of KOTOR, or they're they're calling it a what are they calling it? They're calling it a they're calling it a remake, but it's like not though, isn't it? All they're all they're saying is it's like it's a remake. They're saying Knights of the Old Republic remake. Okay, so if they're remaking that, I think that we may also be getting a new KOTOR. That could be like drumming up hype for a brand new KOTOR. Okay. I mean, a remake is different, but if it's like a remaster, then they would be definitely drumming up hype for a new KOTOR game. And I think it would yeah. make a lot of sense for somebody like Quantum Dreams to be making a, a, a KOTOR game. Because uh, Bioware's got their hands full. Yeah. And also, they like drastically cut down that company. <laughs> and I, I think that they lost... Uh, they, they People lost faith in Bioware after uh, the last after Mass Effect. Mass Effect and Anthem. And Anthem. Yeah, I forgot about Anthem. Yeah. So it would make a lot of sense for Quantum Dream to do something like KOTOR. Um, yeah. But it doesn't have to be. It could be anything. Um, yeah. I'm sure, I I'm sure it's whatever. I I want to see... St uh, I mean... I, I feel like I used to love Star Wars, and I've fallen out of love with Star Wars with all the stuff that's, that's been coming out, and a lot of garbage. There's been a lot of garbage, and I don't like it. But we grew up on Star Wars... We played all like a lot of great Star Wars games because yeah. they were all so different, and uh, 
now the Star Wars games are getting like the the triple A sauce, and it's getting yeah. it's getting stale. So um, <laughs> I want to see well, a lot of different weird companies having their like throwing their hat in the ring and trying weird stuff with the Star Wars license. Yeah, and I think because now Ubisoft is making a game, apparently, of uh, Quantic Dream is we're getting a Kotor remake. Um, I'm sure EA has one more game up their sleeve. They're starting to spread out Star Wars to more companies to let them do something with it, You'll rather than just it. give it to give it to one company who doesn't even really want the license mm-hmm. and just farts out, you know, two mediocre Battlefield games, a pretty good Jedi Fallen Order, and a mediocre Squadrons game. I mean, you know, this also leaves room for a remake or remaster or reimagining of Star Wars Masters of Terrace Kai or whatever you call it. Yes. Terrace Kasai. Terrace Kasi. So maybe we could, maybe, you know, we could bring this back. Yes. I don't know if this is a quantum dream situation, but. Nah, I could definitely see Netherrealm doing it, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm down. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, but, like, that's the thing. Like, we would get, like, weird-ass shit like this back in the day. Yeah, and I'm and, like, down. We would, and, like, you know, not everything was a hit. That definitely <laughs> was not a hit. But, you know, you keep throwing until so- throwing darts until something sticks. And with Star Wars, a lot of things were sticking. You I know, remember I playing now, that game in, like, a Walmart or something. Or, like, a yeah, Kmart or like something. Yeah, Sears. Yeah. Yeah, and we were like, "Oh my god, it's the Star Wars fighting game." We played it. We were like, "Oh, oh no, no." <laughs> like, I think now, uh, Lucasfilm has gotten a handle on like how to do video games. Now that they're not making them themselves, mm-hmm. and they've realized that like going the exclusive route was not the way to go. So they're starting to like spread out and do more things. Um, they've been doing that like throughout the entire like with all the Star Wars stuff. You know, they, they've run out and done TV now. Uh, the comics are not just in Marvel. The IDW does, like, all-ages comics. Um, the books, they had this big, you know, print initiative, The High Republic, that's, like, trying new things with the universe and stuff. So I think now they, fi- they finally found their groove under the Disney banner, and they're, like, starting to just do... And again, not everything is working, but the things that do work are working very well. So it's not that different from when before Disney bought them is what I'm trying to say. I mean, well, they're going back to what it was like. Yeah. There was that long period where the EA exclusivity, they just ran games into the ground. And I think Disney realized that like they they lost a major market by not letting game companies experiment with their IP. Um, Yeah. Because EA... I mean, I'm sure their heart was there with Disney. They were they were like, listen, give us the license. We'll make you a lot of money. And honestly, yeah. they probably did. But no, uh, they did. Yeah. But uh, they were losing that. Uh, they were losing the fans like like. Yeah. We don't want freaking you're, you're doing Battlefront a disservice, you know? Yeah. Uh, I haven't played squadrons. You play squadrons, right? I played Squadrons. I didn't like Squadrons. Okay. I, actually, I have it. I, just, I never touched it. I was mildly disappointed in Squadrons. Yeah, I haven't touched that. Uh, I plan on playing Deathloop sometime soon. It should be... Nice. Let me just see if it's delivered, because uh, Amazon's been being weird with me. They're, they're, I, I too much stuff. I wanted to finish Sonic Colors this weekend, but I didn't. Oh, you're so dumb. I should, I should try to finish that this weekend. Oh, oh. I don't know if I'll do it Death Loop was delivered. It says, "Nice." I will have to take a look. Maybe that'll be Thursday's stream. Anyway, uh, so I, I'm excited for Quantum Dream to come out with something. Yeah. Star Wars. I'm excited for all these Star Wars. We're getting a lot of cool stuff with Star Wars. Uh, there's also I'm... a game coming out for Switch. That's a mobile game that we just saw at uh, Star Wars Hunters that we saw yeah, at uh, the Apple yeah. event. Yeah, I'm interested. I am cautiously optimistic about all this um, because Lord knows I'm afraid Ubisoft is going to turn their Star Wars game into Ghost Recon Wildlands or Assassin's Creed or Watch Dogs or any of their other open world sandbox 
stealth, you go in stealth or go in guns blazing, collect everything on the map type fucking experience. <laughs> uh, Kotor, I hope they do. They like either pick turn based combat or action combat, not this weird hybrid thing that they have. Don't correct me in the chat. It's bad combat. Um, and yeah, we'll see. We'll see what Quantic Dream can do with, you know, do Star Wars their way. I I, I, I think Aspire said that it's going to be turn based or something. It's, it's, it, it, people got really upset with how the combat's going to be. Yeah. I saw well, it on people going nuts on Twitter. Could set the lightsaber standard. What? This is game rant. Redefine lightsaber combat, but there's one big potential roadblock in the way. Aspire remake was officially announced during Sony's PlayStation Showcase 2021. The original story followed. Um, oh, I think this is just speculative. Yeah. Maybe that's maybe that's people were just speculating. They haven't shown anything. I mean, all we really know is it's a timed exclusive on PS5. That's literally it. Yeah, this is another rumor. I'd I'd be surprised if they changed the combat in in any big way. Yeah. Aspire they port the older games. Like yeah, they, they the haven't thing. made a game, which is which is Yeah. The, the the fact that this is a remake is freaking me out because Aspire doesn't do that. Yeah. Remake implies that they're literally remaking the game and they're like adding things to it or taking things out, you know, they're they're it's not going to be the game you remember. It's mm -hmm. going to be something different. Uh, did they make the Ruby game? No, Definitive Edition. This is probably just a port. Yeah. There used to be a like almost exclusively a Mac port house. Like they would oh. port PC games to Mac. Yeah, I don't know if they made this Ruby game. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, developed by Rooster Teeth. So yeah, they're just porting stuff. So so this is the first game that they're like, I mean, it's a remake. Again, yeah. that, that's a weird, I, I mean, it looks, the, the trailer looked like they made a whole thing. Like that looks completely new. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see how they handle a remake. Anyway, uh, moving on. Ikea, we love Ikea. How can you not? This desk is Ikea. Mine too. Yeah. Uh, Ikea introduces a new line of furniture and gear for gamers. Oh. Oh, boy. Get, getting all of your gaming gear is very important. A comfortable chair, a sturdy desk, maybe some storage space. With that in mind, Swedish, Swedish furniture company Ikea has rolled out a new gaming range with over 30 products, both big and small. There are six product families, all of which have delightful names. Nope, <laughs> not not even gonna try. Not, just, they're Ikea, they're, they're, they're in Swedish. They, they got umlauts and crap over it. But I, I will say that one of the product lines were designed in collaboration with Republic of Gamers. Rock. The product line- Rog. What? Rog, yeah. There's no pictures. The product line introduces some obvious pieces like gaming desks and chairs and some smaller accessories like a ring light for streamers or a neck pillow and mug holder that makes sitting at the desk a little comfier. The pieces in the line are offered at different price ranges to meet the needs of a variety of gamers. Furniture offerings include gaming desks, chairs, storage, and accessories including a mug holder, mouse bungee, neck pillow, ring light, and more. For those of you who already use IKEA products, it's worth checking to see if there are any handy add-ons that make handy add-ons to make things work for you, like the Lax Racks addition to the Kalax shelf. The IKEA gaming collection arrives in stores October 2021. What is the Lax Racks? I, I have many Kalax shelves. A Lax Racks um is basically it's in addition to the Kallax that helps separate board games on the shelf. Oh. It's easier to store board games with. Oh, you have shelving for this that you're supposed to give me. I gave them to you. I don't think you ever gave them to me. 
They might be at mom and dad's house. Okay. I remember uh, bringing them. Because yeah. I, I want a little divider for my games, for my consoles. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, is there any pictures of this stuff? See, that's, that's my... Like, all the articles that I looked at, like, trying to find pictures, they were just linked to the press release, which didn't show pictures. Now, this, I'm on thegamer.com, and it has a different picture. Where'd you get this picture? Like, this I is... Know. I'm very Maybe confused. if we go to IKEA's website and just search for the the uh, six product families like individually. Oh wait, Gear Patrol has some pictures. This chair looks pretty cool. Oh, this the standing desk looks pretty cool. It looks like the one that I have. Yeah, at, at the office, it's probably a lot less expensive. Yeah, I hate. I hate. Why is it? just show me the stuff, dude. Yeah, these pictures are horrible. No, it just links you to the press release. I'm go I just Googled it and I'm going to all different pictures yeah. and I don't know where they're getting these pictures from. Oh no, see all gaming furniture. Okay, here we go. Send that to me. Send that link. Or put it in the chat or something. I'm trying, hold on. All right. I'm just seeing extreme close up pictures of some of this stuff. It's like not giving me a good example. Alright, it's in the it's in the chat. For all you... I got it already. All right, you got it? Okay. Uh, Ledberg. That's kind of ugly. I don't like that. <laughs> it, it's, it's, like a, it's, like a, it's like a shelving unit for the wall. Yeah. The desk is a lot. I mean, 300 is not bad for a game. You got to remember, gaming products... Like, usually add a stupid amount of money mm -hmm. to the price tag. A $300 for a desk, period, that's a good deal. True. This desk looks kind of cool. This is not nice and minimal. Yeah. Uh, uh, it looks small, but it's 72 inches wide, so I don't know. Yeah. It, it has a ring light. It's only 35 bucks. Not bad. It got a little that's phone bad, holder. Yeah. That's pretty cool. If you want to take some selfies. Uh, what else? How else so I think that's I... all they have on the that's all they have on uh, IKEA's website right now. Oh, lame. But you know they're gonna have the full line. It debuts in October. Well, here's a here's a cup holder that I guess you attach to your wall. I don't understand. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot here. There is a lot. Yeah. How much for this chair? Because chairs are expensive. And Ikea chairs yeah. are probably not so expensive. I like having a neck, a, a thing for my neck. This chair looks like it has a yeah. thing for the neck. All right, whatever. Uh, cool. You can, you can get your oh. Swedish gaming on. Also, a little <laughs> thing. Uh, PewDiePie put on his Instagram story over the weekend. Uh, an Ikea Gundam. <laughs> it's freaking awesome. That's funny. Uh, so, yeah. I tried to get a shelf, not a shelf, uh, uh, a drawer unit from Ikea like a few yeah. weeks ago. And they were sold out. So what I, I just got a knockoff Ikea drawer from Amazon, and it sucks. <laughs> really? I mean, Ikea stuff is already, like, chintzy. Yeah. But, like, so I got a knockoff of a chintzy thing so it's like or it's like it's really shitty it's like even worse yeah yeah so i mean it's okay whatever i, I got what i paid for furniture's expensive it's ridiculously expensive when you're not going to ikea or all modern or, or wayfair or yeah i i bought a couch the couch we bought for the basement it was like buying a car couches yeah like you, gonna, you, get you up have there. to go like you have to like you know, search the showroom. You have somebody follow you around saying, like, you need help? Sure, you don't need help. Okay, I'll be over here. <laughs> we, we had a couch that we got off of All Modern, and the dog destroyed it. Uh, yeah. And then we got a, an Ikea one, and it's better than the friggin' one we got from All Modern. Yeah. And uh, the, you can wash the covers, and you can get new ones if the dog rips it up. Yeah. So, it, uh, so I actually like Ikea for the most part. Yeah. 
No, Ikea's got good stuff. Although I will recommend, if you can, go to the Ikea showroom and buy the products there because their shipping is an arm and a leg. It is so expensive to it's, ship something from Ikea. It's not many people have access to an Ikea. I understand that. But when I bought my bookshelves from Ikea, like, it was at least $100 to ship them. Mm -hmm. And, like, I could have easy, easily gone to the store and, like, loaded them in my car and taken them home. I think they're cheap. I think it's cheaper to ship to Brooklyn because it really wasn't too bad when I when I shipped stuff. Really? Um, but, yeah, there's the, there's the one on Long Island and then there's one in yeah. Jersey, I think. And then there's not one for, like, hundreds of miles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like in all directions so um yeah you're you're fortunate to have one so close to yeah. you but i mean even me like when i order something from ikea i have to get it shipped because i'm not gonna freaking drive it from long island yeah. over here you know um anyway uh i live for the day will where i'm i'm well off enough where i can just walk into one of those fancy furniture stores and be <laughs> like i'll just take that thank you and it's like four grand and it's a it's a little i remember <laughs> i remember when we were like we needed a bed and we went to pottery barn and we were, almost walked out with like a two thousand dollar bed i was having a panic attack <laughs> the entire time and luckily their computer went down so we're like all right we'll we'll see you later we don't need the bed that bad i went with mom to get a bed in florida for their place and yeah my god some yeah. of the stuff was ridiculous. I was like, I, I've seen this at Ikea for like a quarter of the price. I know. I know. She's she's looking for a couch for us. And she's like, oh, you got to buy this one. It's $2,000 at Costco. I'm like, I'm not spending $2,000 on a Costco couch. I, I saw, uh, I think it was Nade Shot was on some podcast. He was talking about uh, how the 100 Thieves house has a cloud couch. Uh yeah. Uh, what is it pottery barn or or uh one of those freaking places it's a cloud couch yeah. from one of those places um and i was and they, he said if you're if you're successful get yourself a cloud couch that's the that's the mark of a successful person and i said i'm successful i need a couch and i looked up how much a cloud couch was it's four thousand dollars a Christ. section to make a couch you need three sections yeah or at least two, and then that's a love seat. So fuck that. <laughs> Restoration hardware, that's what it is. Scopey's got okay. it. Oh yeah. So yeah. That... Uh furniture's expensive. Even yeah. office furniture, we're getting stuff for, for a studio. It's freaking ridiculous. Oh god, yeah. Office office furniture is like the biggest ripoff. Yeah. Anyway. Uh we're uh, now we're done with the home and garden section of the podcast. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about a Marvel vs. Capcom 2 remaster. <laughs> Digital Eclipse wants to revive Marvel vs. Capcom 2 with a remaster and a studio. Uh, Digital Eclipse. They've done like uh, remasters and ports and stuff of like old games. I think they did the Mega Man collection. They did? Yeah. They also Digital did Eclipse. Blizzard Arcade collection? Yeah. Uh... So Digital Eclipse wants to revive Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and the studio head says discussions about the project have begun. In an interview with Gamer Hub TV on YouTube, Digital Eclipse's Mike Micah said both Disney and Capcom have been approached about the idea. We've begun some discussions on that right now, and we're trying to see how far we can go. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's really not up to us, says Micah. Uh, so all we can do is just make the best case possible and try to make it easy for them and see if they are interested. In 2009, Digital, Digital Eclipse, then called Backbone Entertainment, released a port of MVC2 for the PS3 and 360 digital uh... storefront. The game was pulled at the end of 2013 after Capcom's license to use Marvel's characters expired, Earlier this summer, the hashtag free MVC2 campaign exploded in an effort from fans to try and make the game more easily accessible. Since becoming Digital Clips in 2015, the studio has become known for remastering classic games such as uh, collections for Mega Man, Street Fighter, SNK, Disney, and more. So, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 has some of those most beautiful animations out of any fighting game that ever yes. exists. 
Marvel uh, vs. Capcom 2, straight up, one of the best fighting games, period, of all time. On right. all, across all uh, all fields. Graphics, sounds, gameplay, controls, replayability, multiplayer fun. Just this. I never played it at like a high like level at all. I just I just liked no. the game. Well, I used to play the hell out of the game. I used to just mash the whole time. But it's just a fun game to 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 play. Um but yeah, a lot of these like Capcom fighting games from back in the day had like crazy good animations in this era. Um yeah. so a remaster I think is necessary to kind of upres it, you know. To, to, to get those scans of all of the drawings and get them looking like nice and crisp or even yeah. just the sprites to make them look you know nice and pretty mm -hmm. um yeah. and i mean this is a company who already did it for uh for xbox Th yeah. this this company also did aladdin and the lion king yes uh and we have an article about that next we do Yes. Uh, so this seems like it would be relatively easy to do. I mean, uh, porting Marvel vs. Capcom to or remastering it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Depending I mean, on how this much would work probably they really to... want to do. I remember when they want when they were going to do, uh, they were going to port it to the 360 and the PS3. This was just a few years after Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix, mm, where they basically they completely redid the art style in it. Um, and they said the reason why they didn't completely redo the art style in Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was because the amount of animation they would have to do is too much. So they mm -hmm. found a way to properly upscale all the sprites and have it animate fluidly and perfectly uh, rather than having to redo everything. Mm -hmm. So it probably would be a, like a port or an upconvert or something like that. It wouldn't be a full remake or anything. Right. But I'm right, sure right. it'll look great. Yeah. Um they also have to I mean it's also got one of the best soundtracks of all time. So yes, maybe they'll do absolutely. some audio stuff too. Yeah. Um so yeah. Uh I have high high hopes for something like this. Uh, and I will definitely mm -hmm. play it when it comes out. I'm excited for something like this. Yeah. Um Here's a frame from it that's very questionable. <laughs> I know that they said that you oh, know they're from talking Children with... of the Atom. Never mind. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, it's part of that part of that series. Didn't they do? What's that company? One Up Arcade. Yes. Well, they they they, put... they didn't do Marvel vs. Capcom two. I don't think. No, they did. I think they did the first one, or they did X Men vs. Street Fighter. I I I pretty sure they did all of them in one except for uh except for uh Yeah, I'm trying to remember which ones they did. So Marvel vs. Capcom Arcade. Yeah. Uh overview. So I mean if they can get if if you know Arcade One Up get can get access to do those games, then surely Digital Eclipse Who's yeah. done the game before? So, uh, so, yeah. So, so we got Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Heroes, Marvel Super Heroes War of the Gems, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes period, and X Men yeah. vs. Street Fighter. Yeah. So yeah, all basically all of them except for uh, Marvel vs. Capcom actually want. Two. Yeah, yeah, the most important one. Yeah. Um, I would say the only like hurdle, uh, obviously talking to Disney and Capcom, like that's a hurdle because you got to get those stupid companies to agree on something. But I would say the hurdle is more so Disney at this point mm -hmm. because, you know, they've seen the success with like Spider-Man and even like Avengers to a certain extent. And they're going off and they're doing like more bigger triple A games right now. Um, and the last Marvel game that came out, Marvel vs. Capcom game, Infinite, uh, everybody hates that game. It's not a good game. Uh, and part of the problem with that game was Capcom was trying to make a good game, but was getting no help from Disney whatsoever. And they were under a really strict crunch time like to try and, to try and get it out the door. 
So I feel like Disney might not want to play ball with this for whatever reason, and that sucks Mm -hmm. because this is one of the greatest fighting games of all time, and you can't play it right now. I think that's ridiculous. I think that it would be really easy for them to... All they have to do is say, okay, and then they'll just make a fuck ton of money. Yeah. (laughs) So all they need to do is be like, all right, fine. And it'll come out great, and they don't have to do any work because it's going to be all this company. So yeah. uh, I, I think it'd be really dumb of them to to put the kibosh on it, but uh, yeah, uh, it'll. I think it'll come out great. I mean, we did get ports of the Disney games, and those came out really yes. great. Yes, and apparently there might be more on the way. And oh, that segues perfectly into Disney Classics Games Collection adds Aladdin, SNES, and all versions of the Jungle Book. Now, I'm curious because we already own Aladdin and the Lion King, but it's only the Genesis version of Aladdin. Yes. How do I have to buy a whole nother collection well, now? Let's let's just go through the article. Please. Back in back in August, the, an ESRB rating revealed the 2019 Switch release, Disney Classic Games, Aladdin and the Lion King would be repackaged with The Jungle Book. An update on this new collection, simply titled the Disney Classics Games Collection, has now confirmed all versions of the Jungle Book will be included, along with the addition of the 1993 Super Nintendo version of Aladdin, which was developed by Capcom. Here's a look at the new package uh, that will be available for purchase in November. And here you can see the new package. That is so many uh, games. Aladdin will apparently include difficulty adjustments, camera changes, and additional surprises and all other games included include updates to 1080p graphics and the ability to rewind or fast forward games and a quick save feature. Here's the full list of games uh, added to this new collection. Uh, it is not known right now if existing owners of Disney classic games, Aladdin and the Lion King will be, will have to fork out for this or will receive this content as a free update when the new collection goes on sale this November. Fuck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like I like I mean, I really just wanted the Genesis version. Uh yeah. But I would like to also play that as a version. I'd like to have that, you know? Yeah. Uh, it would be nice to have, especially in this day and age. There's no reason not to have the other version. I already have half of this collection. I don't want to buy all of it again. I already have half of it. Can they should like so- add it as DLC or something? Yeah, so if like if they made it DLC, like you have to pay five bucks to play Jungle Book and Super Nintendo Aladdin, that's fine, whatever. Mm. But if they make me buy the entire game again, I'm gonna be pissed. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, royally pissed. And it's not like I never played Jungle Book on SNES or Genesis, so I really have no skin in that game. I don't. I don't know if it's good or not. Um, but like it's it's. It's that feeling of being incomplete that's going to, like, irritate the shit out of me. When? Oh, it was August of 2019 that that, that collection came out. Yeah. I remember it also came out uh, right when, like, Asphalt came out, I think, on the Switch. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And I don't know where I was. I was, like, alone on a trip somewhere or something. And I, I all I had was my Switch Lite. Mm-hmm. And I was playing both of these, swapping back and forth between the both of these. <laughs> um, or I was like with somebody, and I was like, "Hold on, I gotta." Oh, wait, were we in Vegas? Maybe. No, I don't know. I was no, like, I "Hold on, so. I gotta go. I gotta spend a few hours playing this fucking <laughs> stuff." Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway. Um. Yeah, I hope I don't have to pay for the whole damn thing again. I'd be really pissed off. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, I wouldn't put it past them. I wouldn't put it past a. Uh, Disney to do that. Yeah. Uh this says is Nighthawk. What? Nighthawk Interactive? They might have been they might have been the studio that like made the bundle. Right. Because uh yeah. Digital Eclipse is the one that made the previous one. Uh hang on a second. Let me look this up. Oh wait, you click on it and then it goes to Nighthawk Interactive. If you go to Digital Extreme website, it has it here, and then you click on it, and it goes right to here. Then Nighthawk Interactive's website is 
bad. <laughs> it is a bad oh, website. Yeah. Looks like a freaking WordPress template. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what are we doing, Nighthawk? Oh, Friday the 13th. Okay. Ah. My friend Pedro. Whatever. Looks like anybody could just make a game company these days. <laughs> so... I hope I hope everything works out and we get all the versions of people who bought it. Uh, this is a very good collection because it doesn't just give you like multiple versions of Aladdin and Lion King. It gives you um, a re like almost like a remastered version of Aladdin. They call it the final cut with like features that were cut from the original game put back in, um, like the demo versions of these games that were like the the original betas of it, the Japanese versions. The Game Boy versions, you know, like it, it was really like one of the better remastered collections released, not just on Switch, but on the other systems as well. Uh, yes, I look forward to it. The last yeah. thing we have to talk about is uh, you wrote this here, might be the most important thing we talk yes. about all day, bro. You wrote here, Razor makes gamer thimbles and you put gamer thimbles in all caps <laughs> because i i feel like if i didn't do that people wouldn't take this seriously you're right you're you're, you're right here they are yes. gamer thimbles victory uh, at your fingertips <laughs> if you do not use officially... these gamer thimbles you're not going to be victorious officially known as the razor gaming finger sleeve uh, uh slip on and never slip up with razor gaming finger sleeve that will seal your mobile victory woven with high sensitivity silver fiber for enhanced aim and control. Our breathable sleeves keep your fingers deadly cool in the heat of battle and will also so you'll always have a grip on the game. Smooth high sensitivity fabric woven with highly conductive silver fiber. Each sleeve enhances touch sensitivity and responds. To, uh, while reducing friction, ensuring an agile, intuitive gaming experience for maximum accuracy. Ooh. Lightweight and breathable. At just 0.8 millimeters thin, this airy, sweat absorbent sleeve keeps the fingers dry and cool for, com for total comfort, allowing you to game at peak performance for hours and are hand washable for regular use. So, I don't play a lot of. Uh these types i guess of mobile games mm -hmm. like fortnite for example yeah do you need to use your index fingers i don't know so like i guess this is this guy bought two of two packs yeah also they're square no they're rectangular my thumbs are not so I'm having, a, I'm having a hard time trying to think like how this is going to fit. Like the, there might be some slack on the sides. I don't know. Fortnite isn't even on mobile uh, anymore. I'm pretty sure it is on Android. I think if you still have it on mobile, you can play it. And you could probably get an APK very easily yeah. on Android. Babe, hand me the condoms. No, not those ones. My gamer <laughs> condoms, says Kate McCat. Uh, tech specs <laughs> at a glance it is 35% oh silver fiber fabric 60% nylon 5% spandex oh. it is 1.2 centimeters by 4.5 centimeters it's approximately 0.8 millimeters thick and uh, colorway silver fiber with black and black with neon green hey it's only 10 bucks it's not too bad honestly it's 10 bucks it's 10 bucks for two right so if you want to do the whole hand. <laughs> well, no, you probably should not do that. Um, I mean, maybe maybe if you like want to play piano on an iPad, do your whole hand. There you go, yeah. Should I get these? <laughs> I kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm a little curious. Bob, Bob get mm -hmm. them and please make a fucking video out of it. <laughs> I'm not going to make a video out of it. Please but, make a video out of it. Uh, maybe a Clips Channel video. Um... <laughs> Are they on Amazon? I don't want to buy them from freaking Razor. 
Uh, I'm I am pretty curious, and uh, it's ten dollars is worth the curiosity in in yeah. my book. I mean, again, you should go all out and do the whole hand, but what do I know? <laughs> Thirty for seven? What? What? That's not the. That's not how you say that. Oh, it's a different company. These aren't Razor, yeah. dude. This is a different company. Razor ones. They look exactly the same, though. You're not elite unless you get Razor. There are a lot of versions of this, though. Look at these. <laughs> That's crazy. Very interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, uh, that's it. That's all we got for the day. Uh, but... Good show, good show. It was a very good show. We also have this little thing to do. Quit of the week, quit of the week, quit of the week. Now I have two because I, f there was, uh, apparently I forgot one last week. There was one I wanted yeah. to do and then I just didn't. Uh, this is one for this week. Well, this fucks up my plans to Bingus. And it's a sign that says no Bingus. <laughs> <laughs> by punished havoc but also there's uh, uh this one from apex pig that is the famous picture of uh what's his name george, george no that's his character <laughs> no, jason alexander jason alexander <laughs> playing a gamecube at a, at the gamecube <laughs> event uh and uh, <laughs> and he's given like a terrified look or like a like an angry look <laughs> and it says they nerfed my main jerry so what? Can't For you... what? Yeah, do it. You be Jerry. For what? Can't you get another main? No, Jerry, I can't. I knew all his moves. His strengths and weaknesses, everything. Hours and hours of practice all down the drain. So, George Costanza. Good time. Not going to make it to Evo this year. They nerfed nope. his main. I also want to, I also would like to point out that the version I saw of this was a re, was a quote tweet and the quote tweet said who is this guy going to main in Metroid Prime? <laughs> because the picture is of him playing Metroid Prime. Yes. And he looks, he looks, the look on his face though, like he was caught yeah. doing something he shouldn't be and he's mad about it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, good times. Seinfeld, now available on Netflix. Oh, yes. That Did you see the trailer for that? It was terrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, now we'll talk to you people. Yes. If you love to comment on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. This is the part of the show where we will finally answer you. And, of course, everybody watching at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. Last week on the YouTube comments, we got Sketched in Ink, who says, I just see the trailer for No to I just seen the trailer for no time to die what are the bond movies i need to see what are the good ones to watch and while will answers this i'm taking a <laughs> break so if you want if you just need bond movies to watch in preparation for no time to die then you only need to watch the four previous daniel craig films casino royale quantum of solace uh, skyfall and specter um if you want to watch any of the others um, keep in mind, there's like 20 of them, maybe half of them are good. And I'd say about 80% of them, um, are very dated, very dated. Um, so I would just say, you know, take it easy. Just watch the Daniel Craig, James Bond films and note that, uh, Casino Royale and Skyfall are the good ones. And Quantum Solace and Spectre are the not-so-good ones. So there's that. Hopefully No Time to Die is a good one. Uh, is Bob back yet? Or do, you still, or do you guys just want me to keep talking about James Bond for a little bit until Bob gets back? So if you want, if you want more good James Bond, uh, Pierce Brosnan, who is my favorite James Bond, but I think that's just because I grew up with him, uh, only made... One great movie, which is Goldeneye, and one good movie, which was Tomorrow Never Dies. Uh, World is Not Enough, not not all that good. And then uh, Die Another Day is absolute crap. 
Uh, Roger Moore, The Spy Who Loved Me is like probably his best one. The rest were like really, really silly. Sometimes too silly for its own good. Like don't watch Moonraker. Don't watch Man with the Golden Gun. Um, Timothy Dalton, if you want something a little bit more darker, something more in line with Daniel Craig's James Bond, watch his two films. They're pretty quick and easy to get through. And then uh, Sean Connery's era, uh, the first three uh, is really all you need. I've heard mixed things about Thunderball um, and Diamonds Are Forever is a bad movie. <laughs> Just straight up. Welcome Super back. Tom Brother says, hey, Bob and Will, epic gaming argument question. Do you think the Game Boy Color as a sequel to the original Game Boy or just a mid-gen upgrade? I personally consider it to be a full console in its own right because it has more exclusive games than any mid-gen refresh ever did. I think it's in a weird middle area. I see it, it as its own yeah. console, and I saw it at the time as its own console, but it had such high backwards compatibility, and yeah. uh, a lot of the good games that were for it were for the previous console, and there were a lot of games that worked on both, so yeah. it was a weird sort of middle ground, but I did see it as as a as a new generation. It, it, it was like if the PS4 Pro had like a handful of ps4 pro exclusive games mm -hmm. it's not quite a ps5 but it's more advanced than a ps4 yeah so it it yeah it's, it's this weird combination of both i would say yeah i will say if you're gonna get a game boy like a regular game boy get the color because they right. figured out how to do backlit screens for it now so uh well yeah if you if you want to mod it or buy a modded version yeah well yeah, there's you're, no you're excuse gonna... to there's no excuse to not buy a modded Game Boy if you want a Game Boy right now you should not sure. have to live with a with no backlight <laughs> this in 2021 you really don't realize how horrible the screen is until you put it in your hands and go okay this is terrible <laughs> yeah even a Game Boy Advance it's yeah. fucking not terrible um. But uh, yeah, I mean, of all of them, I would say get a Game Boy Advance. You get some, you get oh, all, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. you get the best of all worlds. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, Game Boy Color is is the way to go, probably. Also, it's it's smaller, yeah. fits in your pocket. Uh, what else we got? Prince Wolfchild who says I had no idea about the Bluetooth thing, and I immediately ran to my Switch and paired my AirPods. I'm so happy now. That last week was when we discovered that you uh, they released an update. You can now use Bluetooth headphones on your Nintendo. Yeah, Switch. we oh, discovered it live on stream. Yes, we did, and we tried it before we even began anything. EPS five thousand says the wind w the Wind Waker. Why do people keep forgetting the V? Because who cares? Because it's cleaner. Didn't you watch the social network? You dropped the the. It's yeah, dude. Idiot, stupid. Lucas yeah. says, great podcast. I hope you talk a little about Batman Day next week. Whoops. Uh, maybe they, if they made a big deal about it, then I would have, but they didn't. Not they my fault. They don't usually make a big deal about no, it. No. Like, Comixology had a really good sale, but, like, that's it. I think they re they released the, those audio adventures on HBO Max, which I haven't listened to yet. How That's about it? How about the the Batman trailer? That was pretty sick. I mean, they released that last year. <laughs> no, there's a new one. No, there isn't. Yeah, from like a week ago. Wait, no, with there the Riddler isn't. talking and stuff. Yes. Yeah, that was in last year's trailer. No, there's a there was a new one that was like last week. A new new one? Because the uh, one I saw that said it was new, he's saying the same shit he said in last year's trailer. There was there was like new stuff in it. There was a tweet from the director Matt Reeves who said like there's gonna he's gonna show off more stuff at uh, DC Fandom, and that was it. That was like the most about that movie that they showed off at least that i've seen i think you are lying about this new because i i've been seeing a lot of people like a lot of things on youtube saying like the batman new trailer and it's just clips from the first trailer uh it's a lot of the same stuff <laughs> yeah now there's new clips if there's new clips 
Like, it what? was September 18th. There's new stuff. I'm afraid to play it because I've now I'm now I'm friggin' scarred for from the WWE. Yeah. I'll, I'll put the link in the chat though. For the YouTube. Yeah, put the link in the chat. I do uh, not. Chat doesn't seem to you. have a verdict on this. <laughs> oh, I can't play it. I don't want to play it. Anyway, anybody else talk from? No, we're done with last week. Yeah, we're done with last week's Wolfden podcast, whatever it is. Uh, so while you watch that, um, okay. Will's video is reminiscent of Max Headroom. Is it because he's freaking choppy? I'm sorry. I I don't know. What to tell sorry, you. I'm trying to load a trailer. <laughs> Original GBA modded with backlit screen is the way to go. Color and original included with with emulators. Uh, I I'm hoping to do that one of these days. I'm gonna get Elliot to help me out. I think. Uh, I'll see the movie when I see the movie. I'm so over the endless trailers. I don't blame you. I mean, it's not coming out the next year anyway. My memory isn't good enough to remember if it's the same as that long ago. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, this is just clips from the first trailer. And, like, the dialogue is all the same. I don't remember the Riddler looking like... This? This seems new to me. Hang on, everything, nothing works. Yeah, that was in the first trailer. All right, fine. There's no new trailer then. Hey, A Webs, thanks for the six months, my guy. I appreciate you. Yeah, this is, this is exactly the same. I'm looking at the first trailer now. <gasps> yeah, I'm pretty, and some of these clips I think are from other movies. Other movies? Yeah. That would be ridiculous, Will. Oh, there's that. There's the, yeah, this is, this is exactly... You're right. It's exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. Oh, hey, Wood. We got a raid from uh, Wood. Oh. How are you doing, dude? How Hello, you? everybody. Welcome to... Will obsesses over a trailer for a movie that's not coming out for a very long time because it has the goddamn Batman in it. <laughs> yes. Uh, what were you guys doing? Wood was just Wood was just repairing another uh, switch. He's a he's a switch modder. We're all modders on a certain level. Yes, depending on who asks. Uh, just yeah. to hear thanks for the two bits. Bit off topic. Are you ready for the Star Wars anime? Yes. It looks friggin' incredible. Yes. I was a big uh, fan of the Animatrix, and this seems like a similar vibe. Did that ha debut yet? I don't, I don't think so. Uh, I gotta check. I'm gonna Google it right now. Yo, d -Mutz, thanks for the prime. <laughs> Uh, what the hell is this? My objective is, is to conceptualize creative ideas for different movies into a trailer form. I combine clips from existing productions using programs like Adobe Premiere and Final Cut. Wait, this is the guy. This is what I thought was the new trailer. I think I think so, because I'm I'm reading the comments of it, and a lot of people were saying like, "That's a line from Arkham Knight." <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I got had. I saw it on Twitter. You, right, this you gotta a be ago. careful be because oh, it's the same like, guy. This, this happens the same all. Guy. This happens all the goddamn time. Like we we'll get one trailer and then nothing for like very long, and then you'll start to see like YouTube pop up with like new trailer for whatever, and like they're very well done. So it's hard to tell the difference between like this and like 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 a professional one and then like this amateur one. God damn it. It was all over Twitter. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. And then somebody shared it to me. It was like new Batman trailer. I was like, oh my God. 
Anyway, like link. Thank you for wait the Prime a month, subscription. Wait a month and then search for Spider Man No Way Home new trailers. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Uh, there's a Gizmodo article about Star Wars Visions. Yeah, I want to check that out. I told my wife about it. And I'm like, it might be able, might be able to get you into anime. And then you can actually talk to my friends. <laughs> uh, is, is it out yet? Or is any of them out yet? I don't oh, know. They're Vision's just streaming released... nine episodes in their entirety on Disney Plus on September 22nd. Tomorrow! Tomorrow we can watch all, right. all nine episodes of Star Wars Visions. Apparently they announced that Shang-Chi is going to be available for streaming November 12th on Disney Plus. So I, I that will. is when I will see Shang-Chi. Yes. I uh yeah, I haven't uh I, I haven't seen that obviously. Yeah. Khalil Jama, thank you for the Prime subscription. I appreciate it. What was Wood doing? Did anybody say that what he was doing? On his Twitch? Uh, I think they said he was just trolling you. <laughs> oh good. Sounds about right. Sounds so what people else? are saying you know? Oreos. Yo, I don't. I'm going oh, to buy Oreos. Was he opening more. Oreo packs like it was Pokemon cards? Because I saw he tweeted that there's rare Oreos. There's like Pokemon Oreos and there's rare like prints on them. Oh jeez. Making money. All right, dude. Swoopy right. girl, thank you for the six months. I appreciate it. Wood, do you have a cloud couch? Get a cloud couch and then let me know how it is. Did he find the one thousand dollar mew? Did he find mew? the thousand dollar mew? Wada is already grading uh, Oreos uh, right now. Shoot me and shoot and, me and inflating the the collector Oreo market. I'll buy it people with my are new selling, Oreo money. People are selling the the Pokemon Oreos on eBay for a stupid amount of money. Yeah, that's the the mew is the rare one. Did you actually yeah. get it? I'm looking at your Twitter now. Oh, wait, hold on. He's opening it with uh, with Kim. Do Oreos biodegrade? No, Ghostosaurus, they just go stale. You can't kill an Oreo. Uh, chat, anyone else playing along at home? Searching through your own boxes? All right, clip the good part, Wood. Come on. All right. I know you're excited pack. here. We got things on, to do. Second pack magic. Yeah. Oh, well, I actually like to go what to bed at an hour. Oh my god, oh my god. Second pack! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my Kim god. Kim is not impressed oh at all. Oh my god. Oh my god, he put it in a freaking seal, dude. He put oh it in god. like a freaking case. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, chat. A thousand dollars right here. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Jeez. Wood, hear, so me excited. I hear me out. Hear me out, Wood, hear me out. Let me eat it. <laughs> Hear me out. If you listen, if you want to capture the magic of a great video, let me eat it. Send it to me. I will eat it. Yeah. You will get you can you can have all the views. Please. For a hundred gifted. I'm tempted. I'm very I'm very tempted. Oh. I'm very tempted with him like to that. give you 100 gifted. Don't play with him like that. To let, to let me eat it. That's $500. No, never. That's like the price of it. That's like how much it costs. Dude, I'm not doing that. Anyway. Uh, uh, we got... Uh, Rick, Rick MSGT. MSGT. Best and cheapest thing you can do to play GBA is make a Game Boy macro out of a DS or DS Lite. I made a few form factor and quality is great. Cheer, cheer, cheer. Um, uh, uh, have I'm, you seen those? The Game Boy macros? Yes. Uh, yeah, those I'm, are cool. I'm interested in those. I, I, I'm not going to say it's the it's the cheapest or even the best. I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be yeah. real with you. Um, I mean, it's really cool. It's really really cool. Yeah. Oh wait, I they, think the they have a freaking. Uh, is this a uh, one of the? Uh, the, the metal ones. That's pretty cool. Is this from uh, that company that made my Joy-Cons? That's pretty oh, sick. I don't know. I know people just take DSs and snap the top screen off. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. 
But yeah, apparently they have the problem uh, is though ones. they don't they don't play Game Boy and Game Boy Color games just GBA. Ooh, because I, the DS doesn't play anything other than GBA. One of the best, I think, is still the Pocket Go, the original Pocket Go, because it's uh, mm. it's the size of a of a Game Boy Micro, and it, you could put a bunch of emulators on it. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. And, and Game Boy Advance emulation is really easy to do. Mm. Also, I mean, it's free to just get a uh, freaking uh, what do you call this? Visual Boy. Whoop! God, I hate Windows. I hate Windows. <laughs> I like jiggled the screen and it, it friggin' took out all my friggin yeah. things. Oh my god. Anyone know how to get all my windows back up quickly? <laughs> Alright, I'm done. I'm done. We're done with this podcast. I'm done. Okay. Thanks for okay. hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So go and check us out over there so you can watch us on demand whenever you want. If you'd rather listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolf Den Podcast, your preferred podcast service of choice. As of right now, the audio version is the only way to listen to the lost episode, episode 45, where we dare take on Vince <laughs> McMahon and his giant ass corporation of weird, sweaty dudes. No matter where you get this show from, though, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Boys, you can also like us on Anchor, apparently. That's yes. a thing. If you listen to us on Anchor specifically, you can give it, you can slap us a like. Um. Anyway, who's on right now? Uh, hmm. <laughs> um. I will slide it over to Miss Click. She just started, I think. Everybody, go watch Miss Click, and I'll see you yeah. on Thursday this week. I'm going to have a video on the Colors Live pen thing. Oh. So, uh, yeah, everybody. Look out for a video on Thursday unless Nintendo makes an announcement on some Switch Online games. Thank you, everybody who listened this far. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, and I'll see you uh, on Thursday for a video and probably a live stream later that night. Okay? Everybody go say I had a misclick. Goodbye. Bye.